as I mentioned earlier. And uh, for lecture time, I will provide some notes. So you just need to follow the notes and I will be providing some videos. So you just need to go through that. And uh, in exam, there will be a very simple question from lecture 10, right? So the notes that I'm going to provide is something related to exam. So please focus that, right? So for lecture 9, so let's uh, focus on lecture 9 today. So in fact, uh, during your PTW week, you guys already have been exposed to the sustainability and also sustainable development goals, right? So today is just a additional lecture to that, right? So today we are going to focus on the sustainability, right? So let's proceed with this. So for today's outline, we will be focusing on four topics. So we will look into what is sustainable development and what are the sustainability pillars models and uh, as an engineer, what's our role? And finally, the case study. So this one is more like uh, your independent independent uh, task. Huh? So please uh, go through this as well. Right. So now, before we proceed further, let's look at the the definition of sustainable. Right. So what is sustainable? As we all know, sustainable is basically we are sustaining something. Oh the ability or capability to sustain. Right. But if let's say we see a very detailed definition for sustainable. So basically it's something related to resource. We ensure that the resource are not depleted or permanently damaged. Like for example, sustainable agriculture. So sustainable agriculture means we make sure that the resource that we are using for this sustainable agriculture is not depleted. So that means future generation can stay able to use it or able to enjoy it. That's basically sustainability, right? And nowadays, sustainability or sustainable lifestyle becomes one of the important thing that we need to address when whatever we are doing, right? As in, doesn't matter whether you are at home or you are at work, right? Or whatever you are doing. There's all, always the concept of sustainability, which integrated in our lifestyle, right? Like for example, we are doing a task, right? We are doing a task. So we are doing a task in a normal way and, and in a sustainable way. There's a difference, right? So in this case, the product, right? Let's say we are, we are going to buy, buy a product. We need to check whether the product is sustainable or not. Like for example, I want to buy a Icon, right? Icon for my house. Okay, icon for my house. I need to check whether this icon is a sustainable icon or not. Is it an energy saving icon or not? So I need to look into that way. So that means nowadays sustainability is already a part of a lifestyle of ours. Right. And talking about the sustainable development just now, what we look at is sustainable sustainability or sustainable. So now sustainable sustainable development. Right. So in fact, the sustainable development is not something new. It is already discussed in a report in 1987. Right. So what is sustainable development? It's basically some goals or some outcome that need by a present generation without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. So that means whatever we are doing now, we are doing it in a more sustainable way right a more wise way so that the future generation can use the existing resources to meet their own needs in future right and talking about the sustainable development goals it is divided into three pillars social environmental and economic so social means it's more to people right so maybe how to improve a lifestyle of people how to make people's life more sustainable way Right, and environmental, of course, there is we are familiar with it. Whatever that causing damage or harm to environment is considered as a not sustainable development. Right, and economic, it's more to it is the business values. Right, so let's see the definition. So for social, we're focusing on the human or people. Right, so how things can be done in a better way to make sure humans lifestyle improved for environment 
we're talking about the, the impact to the environment, the impact. So whatever we are doing, we should make sure that it doesn't impact the environment in a bad way. And economic, as I mentioned just now, it's more to the business oriented or business centric approach where you're focusing on the infrastructure goods or services. Right, so that means we are doing business in a more sustainable way. And sustainable development goals, so these are the currently existing or currently uh, what we call a developed SDG goals, or we call it as a sustainable development goals. There, there are 17 goals, right? There are 17 goals to start from more poverty until partnership for the goals. So each of these sustainable goals is designed to get the, the world's need. So the world's need means there's a committee which look into the sustainable development goals. What they did was they did a study and they come up with a report that the world is lacking with certain things and we need to address these things so that the lifestyle of the people or maybe the environment right or maybe the economic can be improved so from that report they have identified that there are 17 goals or 17 immediate and we've got outcome that need to be addressed right so if let's say we look at the sustainable development goals so what's so special about the sustainable development goals it is universal and integrated with each another okay one another so that means for example let's say one of the countries focusing only on no poverty and they neglect all the other goals so that means they're not into the sustainability so the special thing about these goals are these goals are it's interdependence so that means it depends on each other so that means i cannot achieve one sdg goals alone so that means it is should be a holistic approach where i achieve all the goals all together right so basically what is sustainability sustainable development it's basically a 17 set of goals right so when it is introduced it introduced january 2016 so you guys can count down how many years already right so there are 169 targets so that means you have 17 goals right so each of these goals will have a sub goals so if let's say we had all the sub goals it will be added up to 169 goals right and 193 countries take part in this sdg goal right and this sdg goal is mainly about first we need to do a data collection and we create a baseline or benchmark right then after that we take a proper action plan to meet all this goal and then we do continuous reporting and these sustainable development goals can be clustered into four categories right the first category is social which is goal number one two three four five it addresses on the social part which is more to people centric meanwhile goal number seven until twelve is more to economic so it's focusing on the, the business centric part. And then goal number 13, 14, 15 is more to environment. Okay, it's more to environment. So like for example, the goal number 13, which is most of you already uh, heard about this, or maybe in fact maybe your FIP also something related to the related to this, which is the climate action. Right. And then finally, governance. So this governance is more to cover all these three pillars which, which is social economic and environment so this is basically to integrate all this into one so that's why we need this governance right. so talking about the sustainability or sustainable development goals so let's go one by one right for example goal number one no poverty right so there are few case studies to check whether this goal is changing the lifestyle of the people or not and for example in 2016 almost 10 percentage of the world's workers life huh? life so they, they their average income is around usd 190 which is very much lower right when we introduce these sdg goals right so we can focus certain goals which can improve the what we call the wages of a person also the zero hunger 
right? So maybe in Malaysia, we don't really feel this, but outside of Malaysia, maybe in Africa or other countries, right, other th third world countries. So we can consider this as a, one of the crucial issue that need to be solved immediately, right? So you can see 66 million, right? 66, 66 million primary school age children, right? So they are going classes in a hunger, right? In a hunger. So these are the important things that we immediately need to address. Right? When we talk about the SDG, this is not only really about one country. Sometimes a country is doing good, but another country is not really doing good. So we can help each other. Right? And talking about goal number three, good health and well-being. Right? So from the sustainable, sustainable development goals, so we have focus on the child health or maternal health. Right? So we have introduce the vaccination. We have to make sure that the vaccination is a must, okay, so that we can prevent death for children. Right? And talk about the maternal health, right? So almost 37 percentage maternal health, uh, maternal mortality. So that means uh, during maternal stage, there are some people may, may, may die, right? May die. So the mortality have been reduced to 37 percentage by introducing the this SDG goals. So other than that, like this HIV, AIDS, malaria, or other diseases, right? So this can be reduced, can be minimized by reporting this SDG, right? Because SDG is not only reporting, there is a necessary action plan that we need to follow or we need to take so that we achieve the goal of good health and well-being and environmental and sustainability, goal number 13. So where well, most of the time we are discussing this, okay, the climate action, right? So as we all know, the world's temperature, or we call it as a global temperature, is increased 0 0.85, which is from 1880 to 2012. 0 0.85 now, it's more than that, okay? It's more than that, and it is predicted the climate or the global temperature will rise another almost two degrees Celsius, additional two degrees Celsius in upcoming years, okay? And rising, maybe the two degrees Celsius is a very small increment, but the rise in two degrees Celsius, it can cause massive negative effect. Your food security can be affected, right? So the ice can melt and it can cause flood, right? The entire ecosystem can be changed. Right, so even though it's two degrees Celsius, right, so that's why now we have a mission called mission 1.5 degrees Celsius. So that means, of course, we cannot stop the temperature rise, the global temperature rise. We cannot stop because we are into the industrialization, we are doing some other activities. We can't stop, but what we can do is we can make sure that it's not reaching two degrees Celsius, it should be 1.5 degrees Celsius or lower than that. So maybe the difference is not much, just 0 0.5. But this 0 0.5 can cause a massive negative effect. So that's why now, let's say you guys are aware, now we are into, we call it as a mission 1.5 degrees Celsius. So that means we are doing things, right? For example, we are doing energy saving, right? We are doing a lot of things. We are doing, we have started to practice sustainability, all because of, we wanted to make sure that our earth, our, Global temperature is not hit these two degrees Celsius. It's still able to maintain 1.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. All right. Next, the life below the water. All right. So why why life below the water is important? Because the oceans are very much important. All right. Why? Because the ocean able to absorb 30 percentage of CO2 produced by humans in land. Right. So that means we know that we know that if let's say CO2 is too much, it can cause global warming. But when ocean absorbs the 30 percentage of CO2 that we are producing, the global warming effect can be reduced. Again, this can be tied with the climate change that we discussed just now. Not only that, even oceans, it's the protein source for three billion people around the world. So it means it's a food security. Right. And then it is also noted that acidity of the ocean have increased 26 percentage since we start the industrial revolution right the industrial revolution definitely it comes with a 
a negative effect as well. So when acidity of the ocean water increases, what happens? The life in the ocean might be affected. The ecosystem might be changed. So that's why we treat this as one of the goal to ensure that this acidity level goes down. At the same time, the protein source or the food security for these 3 billion people is guaranteed and the global warming effect can be minimized. And decent, goal number eight, decent work and economic growth. So this is again to create more job opportunities. Okay, more job opportunities, what we call more job opportunities or we reduce the unemployment rate. In many countries, on unemployment is one of the critical issues. Right? So by goal number eight, what we can do is we can reduce the unemployment rate. So by reducing the unemployment rate, we can reduce other associated or other relevant problems like what we call uh, um, the social problems like theft, gangsterism, and all this. Okay, all this associated with the unemployment. Right. And also it is targeted that 470 million jobs is needed globally. Right. Between these years. So that means these are the years where these SDG goals will be in force. So after 2030, what happened? We don't know whether we still maintain the same SDG goal or we might come up with a new set of SDG goal. Right? So it is predicted that there will be need for 470 million jobs. Right? Then industry, innovation and infra infrastructure. This is something to do with industry. industry right? So you know that in certain countries, the basic infrastructure like roads, communication is still limited. Right? So this goal number nine is focused to improve those basic infrastructure needs. Right? And it is very surprising, you see, 16% of global population does not have access to mobile broadband networks. Right? So now we might have, we might own more than two phones. We have one laptop, one tap. Right. But still, this 16% of the global population are unable to access the mobile broadband networks or internet. Right. And also, it is predicted that there is more work needed, or more, more work, or more jobs should be created under this goal. Right. So now let us see what are the available sustainability pillar models. So there are three models. So the first one we call it as a three overlapping circle model. So that means we have economy, we have society, we have environment. And this intersection point is where we call it as a sustainability. So that means if I say I wanted to run something in a sustainable way, I should address the economy, society and environment. So that means I cannot fo focus only on one. I should focus these three things. So that means these three things should work together, right? So this one we call it as a three overlapping circles model, right? So that means the importance is given to all these three pillars, so we cannot neglect one of it. And the second model is we call it as a the largest system bias frame model, right? So here the environment is the, the largest system. And there will be a subsystem where social and also economic. So that means social and economic should be always this part of the environment. So that means whatever, for example, I'm running a business, right? Or maybe I'm doing something for people, right? A people, a people-centric activity. All these should concern for the environment. We cannot neglect the environment. Right. So that means the environment is the one which contains the human system like social and economic. Right. So here the highest priority to environmental sustainability. So that means whatever economic or social related things we are focusing, it should again, it should end of the day, it should again automatically cover the environment part. And the third model is known as three nested dependencies model. Three nested dependencies model where you can see the arrangement. Again, 
the environment is the largest biosphere followed by society then economy so that means again you can see it is interacting to each other or right? interacting to each other so that means for example it shows that human society is sub, 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 subsidiary and uh, subsidiary of subsidiary of the environment so that, that means i have an environment and then society is the subsidiary of the environment and then economy is the subsidiary of the society so that means my first focus is environment then society then economy All right so here the people in society who decide what economic model they want to introduce All right and then now let us see the role of engineers okay so of course sustainability cannot be working perfectly without engineers all right but these engineers they are special why because you can read this huh? engineers always cannot be neutral engineers cannot be neutral it's either they make things better or worse but for example i'm introducing a technology okay the technology is either can cause harm to environment or the technology can save the environment i cannot be neutral right so so where does engineers lives this economy part so whatever technology we are introducing it's more to the economy and this economy should be subsection of the society and also environment right and designing is a very very important important aspect in sustainability right so we cannot do much mistake especially in the design so that's why there's a natural cap capitalism okay there's a quote states that all the really important mistakes are made on the first day so that means during the design stage itself you already identified what can go wrong and we already rectify it it's not that for example i'm running a production i already designed and from design i already executed to a prototype or something but i cannot identify okay there is a mistake when i bring prototype because it causes waste of money human resources and also it can waste time so this is a very unsustainable way so that's why all the really important mistake should be done first day itself right so in order to lead sustainable development so engineers should think differently okay they should have a different design mentality from the first day you okay, know this point from the first day right so that means during design stage itself okay, during design stage itself engineers should aware how can things can go wrong and what can be done if things go wrong right so that means the safety brief precaution should be always there and sustainable development journey towards sustainability where the global society before 2015 right sorry 25 huh? 2005 we consider as unsustainable for a future sustainable society we consider as a sustainable society why because basic needs life quality provided tolerable inequality living with the earth's living so that means the three pillar social environment economic this comes under here so means we are addressing these three pillars and then again one of the role of the engineers towards sustainability journey is choosing technology for example as an engineer i wanted to introduce a technology or maybe i wanted to buy a technology which will assist me in my work so when i look for the technology i should consider the technology technology that i'm going to purchase or procure is it going to harm the environment or is it a sustainable technology or is it it can cause harm to people so i need to consider all this again okay, it is very very important to understand the environment right so environment is a very important aspect that this sustainability or sustainable development goals always address right so end of the day if you let's say you say whatever goals we are trying to achieve end of the day environment will be the vital part of it okay and also appreciating 
appreciation uh, appreciation to the social challenges so social social challenges means this is more be human centric like for example the gender equality right so nowadays in most of the mnc company there is a requirement that the female and male employees should be equal 50 50 percentage right so this is one of the social challenges so that we can reduce the gender inequalities issues right so all this comes under the social challenges and then what is the new approach that uh, engineers can practice first of all we should understand that the sustainable development is not doing things that we are doing now as it is it should be we are doing the things we are doing now with the less bad so that bad means all the negative effect should be reduced or minimized so for engineers so how they can implement this so basically in designing and producing product right so let us see this this is one of the very meaningful uh, i call it an illustration so those days and those days maybe in 19th and 20th century engineers right so normally we are always focused on do things in a great way like for example i wanted to come out with a building okay i want to do a skyscraper okay so or maybe i wanted to build a house i wanted to build it very big right so most of the time we are focusing on the bright right the bright we don't consider about the how does it affect environment how does it affect the economy and all that okay all we are focus is we do things in a great way so that everyone can see when countries sometimes you see countries they wanted to build these skyscrapers they are competing with each one one another right one another which country is having the highest sky skyscraper you know but now with the sustainability increase the 21st century engineer right so we don't have to any build anything that great right all we need to do is use the existing resources wisely like for example if let's say there is an existing building i make it i refurbish or i refurbish it and maybe i try to maintain it in a proper way so that we can reuse so that i don't have to repeat the construction process again because construction produce waste it is high work, work uh, workforce needed and all that so i can minimize that so that's why the new approach is it's not about we show pride pride or we show uh, the greatness by building something so the new century engineers right we should be or we call claim ourselves as a, the sustainable engineers we should focus on what is actually needed we focus on that we focus on that if actually things are not needed i don't i don't have to do it because if i do it any any way it will cause harm to the environment or maybe people or economic right let's compare the things we discussed just now you can see there is a in in uh, what we call inventor so the inventor uh, a smart video for crash okay this is a very good technology yeah? very good technology but again this is what i mentioned just now the pride and greatness versus what is actually needed and how to address this sustainability so you can see there is a student okay young engineer or young engineer okay rachel batilana right so she is come up with a project design of the coal climate emergency shelter for refugees so this is clearly addressing the sustainability development goals for people social right so you see compared to this and this of course this is more meaningful right? more meaningful this is of course a great technology okay i'm i'm, I'm agree with it okay it's a great technology but again is it everyone need this okay but here this project is something that people really need it so this is how we can compare a sustainable approach okay as a future engineer we should focus more project on this okay the projects should be meaningful and the project should solve some problems 
solve some problems but and the society is changing expectations so nowadays our society is moving towards low trust and high transparency so last time we just whatever people do we just trust and we just accept it blindly then we started to ask them question to explain then we wanted to see things and now things are changed where the trend is more to you also should be part of it so that means there will be higher transparency all right okay, this one is just for your reading i'm not going to talk about this okay so what are the new engineering skills that is needed to make sure you guys are a competent engineers who practicing sustainability of course as an engineer technical skills or technical technical complexity is something that very very important but at the same time this technical complexity should be added with the social complexity so that means this is something similar to the project i mentioned just now the toothbrush project versus the shelter right so if let's say technical complexity uh, complexity only it's more like we can do great things we can invent many things but then whatever we are inventing whatever the technology that we are designing it should be address the social complexity as well okay all right so now let us see some case studies huh? so something related to sustainability so if you guys heard about this disease minamata disease right so this minamata disease is basically it's a neurological syndrome so how does it happen by mercury poisoning so there is a a real story and eh? this is real story april 21st 1956 right a five-year-old girl was hospitalized right and she was having some symptoms like difficulty of walking difficulty speaking and convulsions so then a few days later or two days the younger sister also started to show the same symptom right and then not only humans even animals the cats they started to show a strange behavior in fact this minamata disease also is known as cat dancing disease okay because the cat uh, experiences the convulsions go mad and die right then finally they found out that actually all this happened because of a chemical which is methyl mercury is released from the industrial wastewater to the water source of the village right and this factory is operates from 1932 1968 so that means almost 66 is it 66 sorry 36 yeah it's 36 almost 36 years they keep on releasing the this chemical into the, the water source of the village right and then this toxic chemical basically it is accumulated in the food that they consume like fish and other and then they have experienced experiences the mercury poisoning and this effect of this minavata disease has continued almost 36 years you just imagine how many deaths right how many diseases right and then finally they have found out that okay, this is happened because of this factory or this industry where because they are releasing this chemical into the, the water source and then finally they closed down the company but again, close down the company doesn't mean all the problem is solved, right? Since it's already mixed in the water source, it will take time, okay? And then case num study number two, no stroke happened in Malaysia, right? So when this is introduced in 2019, in Malaysia, 2019, so we wanted to re reduce the usage of plastic. So that's why we introduced this campaign, no straw, no plastic straw. Right, and then case study number two, which is the micro beads. Right, so most of the health product we are using, right? So most of the health product we are using, not health product, I'm sorry, it's not health product, it's more to our what we call our personal product like face wash, right? Keep up shower cream and all that. So all contains micro beads, okay? And this micro beads is very, very dangerous. Basically, micro beads is a made up of plastics okay it's microplastic okay so these microbits after the washing right so it is channeled to the drain 
and you can see this is one of the effect of micropeds the fish in the in the sea or maybe in the river right you can see some micropeds here right so that's why in us in 2015 the micropeds was banned in uk 2016 it is banned and this microbits is very much dangerous because it's basically made up of plastic okay small small uh, tiny plastic right so when it drained down to ocean what will happen the fish eats it and then when we consume the fish again it causes us serious issues and then this is one of the uh, real story that happens a few years ago the west coast expressway so if you guys are aware especially in Klein Valley, right? There was a water a water issue, water supply issue, right? So one of the reason that this is very recent, a few years ago. So one of the reason that the water supply affected is because of the, the West Coast Expressway fall down. Right. So this is clearly shows that it is a, a unplanned construction. Okay, where just now I mentioned right as a sustainable engineer, we should always think if things went wrong of things goes wrong how does it affect the human environment and economy we should always think about it right we should always ready to take necessary actions to mitigate that all right so now i have uh, included a few case study or maybe this is more like uh, you need to brainstorm this right so this is very very important please focus this on. all right so if let's say we are focusing on the Challenges one. Okay, the heavy vehicle. So, how does this heavy vehicle impact the economy, society, and environment of the sustainable development development goals? Second case, factory. Let's say I'm building a factory. How does it affect economy, society, and environment? There's always positive and negative things. For example, by building new factory, of course, I can produce more job opportunities. So that means the social issue can be solved more job opportunities but at the same time it can harm the environment as well so in order to mitigate the harmful environment effect what can be done how can i operate the factory in a more sustainable way so we need to think about it and then smartphones or handphones how does usage of handphones affect the economy society and environment and then finally, the highway. This, this is one of the topics that we discussed just now, the WC highway, right? So how does construction of highway affect economic, society, and environment? So you should understand the new construction not always affects us negatively. Sometimes it affects affect us in a positive way, like creating more job opportunities, or maybe it's a money, it's it's a it's it can enhance the nations economy and all that right so most of the time it should be balanced there's no 100 percentage good or 100 percentage bad so normally what we want to want to want to see is the good effect should be more compared to the, the negative effect right and then weapon right so weapon production how does it address its economic society and environment and then yes that's it any question now i open for q a any question? Would you be able to answer the question I put in the chat box? Uh, chat box, let me check. Okay, uh, first let us settle this. Huh? Let us settle this. Any question related to the topic we discuss? Let's focus on that. Okay, what exam we discuss later. Okay, then uh, for CPD, yeah, the due date is shifted to Sunday. I have posted in the group, so I believe all my students are in the group. So please, the group is very, very important. Whatever uh, notification or whatever message I put it in there. So please uh, focus on. Huh? Right, and also, uh, okay, let's, let's, before I move further, let me check any question regarding to today's lecture. Let's go one by one. Any question? Uh, 
Okay, so I believe there is uh, no question. Right? Okay, so now next uh, for today's class, I would like to share some topics that you guys should focus for your final exam. Okay, but I'm not going to record this. Okay, I already stopped recording. Okay, so please take note. So what are the important topics that you guys should focus? All right, so you guys ready? Okay, can someone respond please so that I can know that I'm not talking alone? Yes. Okay. All right, so please take note. So for your exam, huh? so for your exam, your final exam, I believe the schedule is already out. So if not mistaken, your final exam is on January. I'm not sure, is it 9th or 14th? So please check your schedule, so it's already out. All right, so for your exam, what are the topics that you guys should focus? The first, you should know what is the function of the Board of Engineers Malaysia. It's in our lecture one or two. So please focus that. And what is the relationship between BEM and also engineering education? Okay, next you should focus on the BEM's code of conduct. So BEM code of conduct will be, uh, I mean, uh, won't be provided, huh? won't be provided. So you need to focus the code of conduct, just go through, go through, it's, it's a quite a, a lot, okay? You don't have to memorize everything. Just try to identify the keywords, right? Identify the keywords, okay? I have already uploaded BEM code of conduct. Try to identify the keywords, right? So maybe you can relate this code of conduct related to the ethical issues in engineering, okay? The next, quality management, right? So I have introduced a few quality tools, okay? Few quality tools, so we need to focus on that. Then you also should know how to do a fishbone diagram. I repeat again, you guys should know how to do a fishbone diagram. Then you guys should know what is safety, hazard, risk, incident, accident, all this part of your OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health. You guys should know each of it clearly. And then you guys should know how to calculate IRR, internal rate of return. Okay, so for this, I will upload one lecture. We just follow that. And then you also should focus on the sustainability, the topic we covered now, we covered just now. So what are the pillars in sustainability, right? and uh, how does engineers can contribute to that. And then you also should focus on the, the lecture on energy efficiency. Right. So how engineers can contribute to the energy efficiency. All right, that's all. Any question? Sir, could you repeat number one and two, please? Number one and two. So number one, you should focus on the function of BEM. BEM means Board of Engineers Malaysia. And then you should act, you should know how does BEM contribute to engineering education. So number two, you should know the BEM's code of conduct. There is a document that I, I have uploaded in my times. So go through the code of conduct document. 
and then try to relate that with ethics right so for example engineers engineer engineers involving in a certain action whether the action is ethical or not right if it's it's not ethical you should you should justify based on the code of conduct and also try focus on the decision matrix okay how to do a decision matrix right anything else before we conclude today's session All right, so I believe there is no more question. So thank you very much, and uh, so this will be our last lecture for this semester. So start from next week. There is no lecture, so anything, please communicate with me in WhatsApp. Okay, you can personally uh, text me. Right, and thank you very much for your cooperation throughout this semester. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.